Is it okay if I request a song to kneel as we pray? <coughs> Divine Father in heaven, we want to thank you that we who were so guilty were given grace and mercy Mm. that we do not deserve. Father, thank you. Oh, Father, for so how long the devil has pointed us to our own sins, created such brokenness and Mm. discouragement that has kept us from being used in the Master's hand. Thank you, Father, for tonight you are teaching us to stop looking at our sins and start looking unto Jesus. Mm. I thank you, Father, there are those of us here who have relied on self and have only made a mess out of our lives. And those of us who relied on our experience, our abilities, our so-called talents. Mm. And we've only brought shame to your name. Yes. Dear Father, we are here tired, tired, O oh Father, of relying on flesh, which Bible says is a curse. For tonight, we want to learn, Lord, how to lean on Jesus. Amen. Father. Teach us what reliance actually means. Speak to us. Speak to our hearts. May our worships together here night after night, I beg, Lord, not just be intellectual, but very spiritual. Yes, Lord. Please, Father, may you not just appeal to this brain, but appeal to the inner crevices of our hearts. That we may respond from the inner being that God is our God. Yes, Lord. Father, please, please help us today. We want to thank you for your manservant who you have sent for your work, for Mm. your glory, and for your honor alone. Then, Lord, may nothing here be ours. May everything be yours and yours alone. Amen. Father, we thank you for reminding us in the book of Corinthians that we are not our own. We are bought with a price. Yes, Lord. So please, Father, may we learn this week to respect that price and learn to absolutely rely on Jesus Mm -hmm. Christ our Lord. Thank you, Father, for what is about to happen. And just as the sweet wind blows upon Mm. us, we do not know where it comes from and where it goes. We claim that the Holy Spirit also will move upon us, and we shall never be the same again. We claim this promise that Jesus made to us, Jesus who is the promise keeper, in his precious name, we pray for divine strength on all of us, power in this vessel that you have chosen this week and glory to your name alone in jesus name we pray amen amen only god could have orchestrated such an event like this Amen? amen praise god from whom all blessings flow Even before this meeting began, we already received so many blessings, especially this place. We never thought that we will have this place until a few minutes before the meeting. We serve an amazing God. And uh, as uh, Ron just gave uh, a short introduction a while ago, uh, for those who don't know me, I have been a missionary for the past five years. And uh, I have been living by faith by God's grace and nothing of me I tell you I I am a useless instrument being placed in the hands of an all-powerful almighty and an awesome God and uh, while Sir Sousa a while ago before we started he asked me so how do you survive and I said oh by the way sir uh, God is taking care of everything I'm relying on God and everything and as a matter of fact, when I started to become a missionary, I, I asked for the Lord's guidance and leading. And He led me not to ask, not to receive any salary. So for the past five years and six months, I, I'm not receiving any salary from human being, but I'm receiving it from the Lord. Amen. And you know what, my dear friends, that's an awesome, awesome type of setup. <laughs> and as the Lord has led me through a lot of places, through a lot of encounter, through a lot of, of people, 
the Lord has taught me one thing and one thing alone to absolutely rely on Him and tonight and, and the next nights I would like to share with you how the Lord has, has brought me out of, out of unbelief and how the Lord has brought me into this, this type of journey it might be scary when you hear a life like this but you know what my dear friends is the most amazing anxiety free adventurous life that you could ever experience and tonight I'd like to share something with you a, a life of absolute reliance as well and the moment I read this wonderful passage this wonderful article from the signs of the times I could not keep it to myself I have to share this and when I read about about the, the life of Abraham. I'll be sharing about Abraham tonight. When I read about the life of Abraham in those 20 verses in Genesis 22, I could not stop and just sit down. I have to know about, I have to know more about this. And somehow the Lord led me into this article and one, and one morning while I was reading this article, I could not hold my emotions and tears just began to flow. Because in the Bible I saw from those 20 from those 20 verses, it seems so short, but praise God for the spirit of prophecy. Amen? It gives a bigger picture, a deeper picture, a deeper emotion. And so I'd like to share with you. You know, all of you, I guess, know the story of Abraham and how he was tested and how he, he has gone through this, this very difficult test of his life. So I'll read to you some parts that that really inspired me i will not read to you everything but my highlight highlighted ones it says here abraham was directed of god to go up mount moriah and there offer up his son as a burnt offering the lord tested abraham by a most fearful trial and come to think of this <laughs> i could not imagine being asked by god to off i don't have a son i'm single by the way and praise god Praise the Lord. <laughs> and I will not go through this type of trial. Maybe not anytime soon. <laughs> I'm still hoping. <laughs> and it says here, my dear friends, this command of God was calculated to steer his soul to its depths. Wow. To steer its soul to its depths. It is scary. Now a trial was before him which caused all his other afflictions to appear insignificant. The words of the command were sufficient to harrow up his soul and to give him a deepest pain. Can you imagine this? God put him in the situation. But I'd like to let you know that there is a wonderful promise here. And when I, when I saw this promise, it really blew my mind. It says here, Our Higher Calling 323, Paragraph 2. Our Heavenly Father measures and weighs every trial before He permits it to come upon the believer. Did you realize that our Father measures and weighs every trial before He allows it to happen to you? Isn't He amazing? He considers the circumstances and the strength of the one who is to stand under the proving and test of God. And He never never permits the temptation to be greater than the capacity of resistance. Isn't He a nice God? Isn't He a good God? He will allow you to experience. Sometimes you will think this, this trial here is, is like back breaking, bone breaking. But you know what? The way I see now how the Lord allows us to endure the trial, we are measured by the trials that we face. Can you see that? You are measured by the by the trials that you're facing because the Lord will not allow those trials for you to experience if you don't have the capacity to resist it okay now let's let's go back to this beautiful passage I'll continue reading so the command just imagine the command take now thy son thine only son isn't God taunting Abraham here take now thy son and he emphasized it your only son son and offer him as a sacrifice and just imagine this time this is the time that God abhors child sacrifice human sacrifices and now God is not making any sense 
Why is he asking Abraham to offer up his son when he is against this practice? And, and when that hit Abraham, it says here, Abraham was tempted to believe that after all this might be a delusion. Wow. Because just imagine the night before or a few nights before the Lord appeared to you. Look now toward heaven and tell the stars if thou be able to number them. And he said unto him, so shall thy seed be. Now it doesn't make sense. You have that promise and now you have the command, offer up, offer up your son. And you know for a fact that Abraham during this time, he is 120 years old and Sarah was 110. And they had this miracle child and now he is being asked to sacrifice. And listen, stricken with grief, he bowed before God. And this should be what each and every child of God should do whenever we are assailed with temptations like this. He says here, stricken with grief, he bowed before God and prayed as never before. And prayed as never before. Most of the time when we are being assailed by temptation, we complain as never before. We murmur as never before. We throw tantrums as never before. But we have actually prayed as never before. It says here, for a confirmation of this strange command, for greater light, if he must perform this terrible duty. He walked forth several times, met the heavenly messengers to where he met the heavenly messengers, hoping to meet them again and receive some special directions from them. But he gained no light. Darkness seemed to close about him. Day was approaching and he must be on his journey before light. And by the way, the journey that he's about to take, it's a three-day journey. A three-day three day torturous journey. And just imagine during this time, God himself was talking face to face to Abraham. Talking face to face. And he went to this place hoping that I saw God here before. Maybe he will appear to me this time. Hoping, Abraham, there's a change of plan. You pass the test. You don't have to do this. He was hoping, but there's no light. No messenger came. And while preparing for his journey, and just imagine the day, the day that he was about to do this. He was thinking if he could only unburden himself and share this burden to Sarah. But he was thinking if Sarah know about the Lord's plan, Sarah would stop him. Sarah would do everything possible not to not for this plan to, to succeed. So he says, he went forth on this journey. Wow, thinking about this really blew my mind. He went forth on this journey with Satan by his side to suggest unbelief and impossibility. Did you get this? He went on this journey, Satan by his side, whispering unbelief and suggest what? Impossibility. And while he was walking, he could not even engage a proper conversation with Isaac. <laughs> he could not look at his son and tell his son, uh, by the way, I will offer you after three days of this journey. He could not open up a conversation. He saw his beloved son Isaac while they were sleeping, locked in slumber, but he could not sleep. Abraham, that 120-year-old tired guy, could not sleep. And you know what he did? When he could not sleep, he spent the night in prayer. He would pray, still hoping that some heavenly messenger would appear to tell him that this is enough, that he may return to Sarah with Isaac unharmed. A heavy pressure was upon him. But you know what, my dear friends? When he, when he was assailed with that temptation, he looked up to the heavens and he was reminded of the promise that your descendants would be as numerous as those stars. He was walking with a heavy heart, but he says a heavy pressure was upon him, but he staggered not on the promise. And this is one thing that we should learn from Abraham. Even though he was assailed with a lot of doubts, where did he lean on? The promise of God, his word, the Bible. Oh. And it says here, Satan whispers his doubt, but Abraham resists his suggestions. Wow. Satan whispers his doubt, but Abraham resists 
his suggestions. How did he resist? By going back to the promise. By relying on the promise. Sometimes we are being assailed. No, you cannot pass. No, you know what? You have to go back to your family. You have to do this. You have to, to do that. But the Lord has placed you here. But the Lord has, has set you on a direction. And all you have to do is what? Go back to the Word. Look for the promises that applies in your life. And this is the thing that could help you stand up against the suggestions of the enemy. Oh, listen to this. Satan suggested that he must be deceived, for God had said, Thou shalt not kill. Wow. <laughs> Imagine this, my dear friends. This is the time that God contradicts his command. But for Abraham, he knows for a fact that it is God who said that to him. And some people might think, how could Abraham be sure that it was God? My dear friends, he walked so close with God that he could not be deceived. He knows God's expression. He knows God's character. And he could not question that it was really God who was talking with him. And sometimes people might, might question you. And, and people have questioned me. Jem, how did you know that your impressions came from the Lord? That it was not just your, your impression. My dear friends, if impressions does not match with the word, it's not of Him. <laughs> it should match together. And if you have spent time talking with the Lord, you will know His voice. You know His leading. And this is what Abraham is doing right now. Okay. Oh. He walked forth. Oh, no, no, no. I went back. Let us proceed. And the second day was no better. The second, the second day was worse. Just imagine looking at your son again, sleeping, and you could not sleep. And you know what he did? Again, he prayed as he never prayed before. And this is what the result was. He did not murmur against God, for Isaac had been given to him unexpectedly. And this is what, ha what will happen to us. If we are being assailed by temptation, if we are being assailed by trials, if we bend our knees as, as we have never bent before, as we relied on God, as we will rely on God the way we have never relied before, we will never go to the point that we will murmur to the Lord. Amen? He had received him with gratitude and great joy. And though he was the son of his old age, the son of his love, he yet believed that the same power that gave him Isaac could raise him again even from the ashes of the burnt sacrifice. Remember, my dear friends, there was not yet a resurrection story before Isaac. Did you get this? You get this. So there is no basis for Abraham to think about this. There is no basis. But you know what the wonderful thing is? You will know God's impossibilities if you walk closely with Him. Because you will sense his character. Amen? When you are being faced with impossibilities, you will know for a fact that God can get me through this. Because it's not going to be about you. It's not going to be about the circumstances. It's going to be about the God that you rely on. And your God is more powerful, powerful than you could ever think of. And listen. Uh, he strengthens his soul by the evidences he had of the goodness and faithfulness of God. <laughs> if there's one thing that Abraham looked back on, he looked back on the Lord's goodness. He looked back on the Lord's faithfulness. And when he looked back, he saw that God never failed him. And he went on. He wished no one but God to witness this parting scene between father and son. Abraham knew not how Isaac would receive the command of God. And as they drew near the mountain, Isaac spoke to Abraham, his father, his, to Abraham his father, and said, My father. And he said, Here I am, my, my son. And he said, Behold the fire and the wood, but where is the lamb for a burnt offering? These endearing words, My father, pierced his affectionate heart. And again he thought, Oh, that I in my old age might die instead of Isaac. Wow. My dear friends, it is easy for, for a father to die, but for a father to give his son, it's unimaginable. Isaac assisted his father in building the altar. 
Together they placed on the wood, and the last work preparatory to the sacrifice is done. With quivering lips and trembling voice, Abraham revealed to his son the message that God had sent him. In obedience to God's command, he had taken the journey. Everything was ready. Isaac was the victim, the lamb to be slain. Had Isaac chosen to resist his father's command, he could have done so, for he was grown to manhood. But he had been so thoroughly instructed in the knowledge of God that he had perfect faith in his promises and requirements. Wow. And listen, Abraham assured his son that his affections for him was not diminished and that he would rather give his own life than to deprive him of life. But God had chosen Isaac and his requirements must be fulfilled to the letter. He assured his son, even though I'll, I'm going to sacrifice you, don't think that I don't love you anymore. I would give my life for you. If God has accepted him, and this is a wonderful thing, Isaac at first heard the purpose of God with amazement amounting to terror. He considered the matter fully. He was the child of a miracle. And if God has accepted him as a worthy sacrifice, he would cheerfully submit. Can you fathom this reaction? If God has accepted him as a sacrifice, he would cheerfully submit even though it cost him his life. Such an amazing thought. Come to think of it, being a sacrifice, you should be unblemished. It should be perfect. And Isaac saw that from God's perspective. If it was me, I will just, uh, maybe I'll say, take my brother, Lord. <laughs> take my father instead, he's willing. But this time, you know what, he saw, he saw it from God's perspective that he is accepted a sacrifice and he cheerfully submitted. Oh, life was dear, life was precious, but his creator had specified him, Isaac, to be offered up as a sacrifice. And this is really heartbreaking and mind-blowing. He, Isaac, comforted his father <laughs> by assuring him that God conferred honor upon him in accepting him as a sacrifice, that in this requirement he saw not the wrath and displeasure of God, but special tokens that God loved him. In that he required him to be, the consecrate, to be consecrated to himself in sacrifice. He encouraged the almost nerveless hands of his father to bind the cords which confined him to the altar. Can you imagine this? He being the sacrifice encouraged his brother, his father to bind him. The last words of endearing love were spoken by father and son. The last affectionate filial and parental tears were shed. The last embrace were given. And the father had pressed his beloved son to his aged breast for the last time. And his hand, hand is uplifted, grasping firmly the instrument of death, which was to take the life of Isaac. When suddenly his arm was stayed, and the angel of the Lord called unto him out of heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, Here I am. And he said, Lay not thine hand upon the lad. Neither thou do anything unto him. For now I know that thou fearest God, seeing thou hast not withheld thy son, thine only son from me. You know what, my dear friends? If you read Patriarchs and Prophets, if you read this chapter, the angels beheld this, this wonderful scene, this horrifying scene, this self-sacrificing scene, and they fully understood now the pain of the Heavenly Father that He was about to do in sacrificing His only beloved Son, Jesus Christ, on the cross. This scene in Abraham's sacrifice opened the eyes of the whole universe that they now see this is what our Heavenly Father is about to do. 
And I like the words of Heavenly Father here. For because thou hast done this thing, and hast not withheld thy son, thine only son, that in blessing I will bless thee, and in multiplying I will multiply thy seed as the stars of heaven, and as the sand which upon the seashore, and thy seed shall possess the gate of his enemies, and thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed, because thou hast obeyed my voice. And because of that, he was called the father of the faithful. This great act of faith teaches the lesson of implicit confidence in God, perfect obedience to his requirements, and a complete surrender to the divine will. In the example of Abraham, we are taught that nothing we possess is too precious to give to God. Isn't this amazing, my dear friends? Nothing we possess is too precious to give to God. All that we have is the Lord's. Our money, our time, our talent, ourselves, all belong to Him. Amen? Amen. He has lent them to us to test and prove us and to develop what is in our hearts. Wow! Come to think of it, sometimes we think that all of this, I have accumulated all of this because of my talent, because of my skills, because of my education, because of my intellect. My dear friends, these are all just lent from God. And He is just testing us. How much are we willing to surrender? How much are we willing to rely on Him? If we selfishly claim as our own the favors God has graciously entrusted to us, we shall meet with great loss, for we rob God. And in robbing Him, we rob ourselves of heavenly blessings. Wow. And the benediction Christ will give the faithful and obedient. Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of the Lord. I guess this is the reason why that the Lord has not given us things to manage and greater things. Because we have not surrendered to Him the little things that He has lent to us. Whatever talent, whatever time, whatever skill that God has given us, it should be brought back to Him. And you know what's one amazing thing? One thing that I, has that I fully understood, that when we surrender things to the Lord, we give up things that we rely on. Did you get this? You give up things that you rely on. When you give it to Him, so where do you rely? You rely on Him. You fully rely on Him. Let us continue reading. How many now who profess to be Christians would yield up to God their beloved Isaac? And the question tonight right now is, who is your Isaac? What is your Isaac? Or what are your Isaacs? How many now who profess to believe God and pass for Christians will not obey His voice when He calls upon them to deny self and yield to Him their darling treasures? My dear friends, remember when Isaac was offered, there was, a, there was this hand who stayed, the hand of Abraham. But listen to this next passage. Our Heavenly Father surrendered His beloved Son to the agonies of the crucifixion. And legions of angels witnessed the humiliation and soul anguish of the Son of God, but were not permitted to interpose, as in the case of Isaac. No voice was heard to stay the sacrifice. God's dear Son, the world's Redeemer, was insulted, macked up, derided, and tortured until He bowed His head in death. What greater proof can the Infinite One give us this divine love and pity? He that spared not His own Son, but delivered Him up for us all, how shall He not with Him also freely give us all things? Do we need more proof, my dear friends? Do we need more proof? He is capable. He is capable of handling everything that He requires you to surrender. And when you do so, my dear friends, when you do so, you have this wonderful opportunity 
of absolutely relying on your Heavenly Father. Isn't that an amazing offer? Isn't that an amazing gesture that God wants us to participate in? I'd like to, to read this few paragraphs before we close. There are many who profess the truth, who do not love God half so well as they love the world. God is testing and proving them. Their love of the world and of riches darkens their minds, perverts their judgment, and hardens their hearts. God has to some of them at least revealed His will and called for a surrender of their Isaac to Him. But they refuse to obey and let the golden opportunities pass. Wow! This is one thing that I have learned here. Whenever the Lord requires us to surrender something, that is one golden opportunity, my dear friends. How many golden opportunities have we passed by? How many golden opportunities did we just let pass through our, our front yard? And it says here, no. Oh, Precious time is bearing into eternity a record of duties unfulfilled and of positive neglect. Nothing we have is of true value until it is surrendered to God. Can you say amen? amen? Nothing that we have is of true value until it is surrendered to God. The talent of means devoted to the cause of God and the work of God is of tenfold more value than if selfishly retained for the gratification of our own pleasure. Can you say amen? amen? Whatever you hold to your heart dear, if you selfishly hold, hold on to that, my dear friends, you will lose the opportunity of experiencing tenfold of the blessing. Wow! The deepest poverty with God's blessing is better than the houses and lands and any amount of earthly treasure without it. God's blessings place as value in everything we possess. But if we have the whole world without His blessings, we are indeed as poor as the beggar, for we can take nothing with us into the next world. Whatever you're hanging on to right now, whatever things you think are your treasures, my dear friends, they will just be firewood in the end. The great, this great act of faith teaches us the lesson of implicit obedience in God, perfect obedience to His requirements, and a complete surrender to the divine will. In the example of Abraham, we are taught that nothing we possess are too precious to give to God. And you might wonder, why did the Lord ever test Abraham? Why did the Lord ever got to the point of testing Abraham? Listen, in taking Hagar for his wife, he showed this trust in the promises of God. Wow! In taking Hagar as his wife, he showed this trust in the promises of God. Why? He made his own way. He gave his own solution. He did not wait upon God. He moved ahead of God. And by doing so, he distrusted God. And listen to this powerful quote, the last thing that I'd like to read to you. If he had patiently waited for the promise to be fulfilled in God's own time and manner, and had not sought to make a providence himself, he would not have been subjected to this closest, to this, the closest test that was ever required of man. Wow, my dear friends, God tested Abraham because he made his own solution. He made his own way. And come to think of it, why did God test Abraham? Because God wanted Abraham's full and total reliance on him. He wants his total reliance to be only on him to be only set on Him, not on anything else, not on the suggestion of His wife, not on His own intellect, 
not on his own ideas, but entirely on him, absolutely on him. And when I saw this, this act that God has done, I saw how God is so concerned of each and every individual that He wants us to fully, absolutely, entirely rely on Him. Because that's the only safe way to survive in this world. Don't we have an amazing God? Don't we have an amazing Father? He will do everything in His power to let you rely on Him, to let you surrender your life to Him. Because He knows for a fact that that's the only way that you will be safe in this world. That's the only way that you will find joy. That's the only way that you will find fulfillment. My dear friends, I've tried to live my life for the past 30 plus years. Yes, now I'm trying to reveal my age. <laughs> but I was so unhappy. I might appear happy, but it was all a show. And not until the Lord pulled everything. The Lord took out everything, as my brother just, just said, a painful experience. Even things that I thought were good, the Lord pulled it out. Isaac, and come to think of it, all, all the, the while we are thinking that the Lord will take out only the bad things in our lives, but sometimes He will test us even with the best things in our lives. Even with the best things in our lives. Why? Because He wants you to have the best third thing. <laughs> And you know what's the best thing? It's Him. It is Him. Sometimes we rely so much on the gift that we forget the giver. And the giver has been going around the circle trying to get our attention. But we have been so focused on the gift. And this is one beautiful thing about Abraham. When the Lord required Isaac, the greatest gift that he has ever received, he remembered Isaac is not mine to begin with. Isaac was a gift. And I have, and if he requires this wonderful gift, there's nothing I can do but to surrender it to the giver. Isn't that amazing? And what, what a wonderful thing. Let us not forget what happened next. And he became the father of the nation. He received the blessing. It was not just tenfold, my dear friends. I don't know if it's a million fold or more. This is one thing that happens when we give in to the requirements of God. Most of the time we think that He's a taxing God, that He is a hard God. But the problem is we don't know our God. We don't know Him that well. We don't know how beautiful He is, how good and awesome He is. That His only desire is to give you joy. His only desire is to keep you close to His heart. His only desire is that you lean on Him, that you lean on Him hard. Amen. That when you go around the campus, they will not see you, but they will see that you are His child. That they will see that you are like grafted in this vine that produces life. I know that this is the first night that I'd like to make an invitation right now. If you know what your Isaac is. If you identified who your Isaac is, right now the Lord is giving this invitation to you. Will you be willing to give God your Isaac? Will you be willing to surrender to the Lord your Isaac? If you are willing, my dear friends, I'm inviting you to come, to stand and to come as close as possible and we'll offer a word of prayer. If you think that God is talking to you right now and you identified your Isaac, if God requires of you that Isaac, come, get down from that chair, get down, get down from that podium and come as close as possible, come as near as possible. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Praise the Lord. It says that heaven is rejoicing when one soul comes to the Lord. But praise God, there's a lot of souls that are coming to Him right now. The invitation is still open.
for those of you who identifies who your Isaac is, I'd like you to please stand. Let's bow our heads. Let's bow our heads. Our great God, our dear loving Heavenly Father, Lord, we come before you. We just like to respond to the love that you have done for us. And Lord, Lord I, I'd like to, to ask that you please continue to open our eyes and to open our minds that we will see how wonderful of your Father you are, how amazing of a God you are. Lord, I pray that if you are still speaking in the hearts of our brothers and sisters or on their seats, I pray, Lord, that you please give us the courage to come. Give us the courage to move forward. And while heads are still bowed, while eyes are still closed, the invitation is still open. If the Lord is speaking to your heart, we invite you to please come. Wherever you are, the Lord would like to invite you to come as close as possible. Please come. The Lord is speaking to you. Praise the Lord, sister. Praise the Lord, brother. Praise the Lord. Let us bow our heads. And if anybody is compelled to praise God, whether you are near or you, whether you are at the back, you are free to chime in as we praise the Lord this evening, as we do a very short, a two-minute united prayer. Into my heart, into my heart, come into my heart, Lord Jesus, come in today, come in to Dear Father, I'd like to start this season of praise by thanking, the, by thanking you, dear Lord, for giving your Son on the cross for us. We praise you, dear Father, that we can completely surrender in you. Amen. Amen. Yes, dear God, we praise you. What could we ask for more, Lord? You have given all already. Amen. Praise you, Father, for the message you have chosen for us. Today. Amen, Lord. Praise you, Father, because even before we could give our best, you already given your best. Amen, Amen Lord. We praise you, Heavenly Father, for giving us the clear picture of the blood of Christ. Amen, Amen, Lord. We praise you, loving Father, for calling us. Surrender our lives to you. Yes, Lord. We praise you and thank you, dear Father, for giving us the courage to surrender lives to you. And we praise you, dear Father, for still accepting us even though we are broken and sinful. Amen, Lord. Righteous Father, we praise you for your plan for us is better than our dreams. Amen, Amen Lord. Yes, dear Lord, we praise you and we thank you that you always go above and beyond what we could ever dream or imagine. Amen. 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 And we praise you, loving Father, because you taught us how to trust. Amen. Amen. Father, we praise you for in Jesus you have set for us an example of reliance. Amen, Amen Lord. Oh, 
to Jesus I surrender all to Him I freely give I will ever love and trust Him in His presence daily live I surrender all I surrender all All to Thee my blessed Savior I surrender all Oh dear Father Thank you that you have given us all the reasons to surrender to you. Amen. And you're giving, that you have given us the example to surrender. Mm. And Lord, as we end this, this prayer meeting tonight, I pray, dear Father, that the message will dwell in our hearts. Amen. And Lord, please help us to remember that surrendering to you and relying upon you does not happen only once. Mm. That this is a process. Mm. So Lord, please help us to give in to the process. Yes. Help us, Lord, to know that we don't have any strength of our own, that even for strength we have to rely upon you. As Abraham relied upon you. And Lord, there's one thought that I forgot to mention, that as Abraham was walking, that every step that Satan was whispering in his ears, and in the last line, dear Father, that in every step that you were with him, Oh Lord, thank you so much for reminding us that no matter how much trials we face, no matter how big those trials are, that we are not alone walking in this world, that you are with us. Thank you, Lord, for your promise for each and every one of us. These are not just for people who stood and who came forward. This promise is for everyone, everyone who hears your message, everyone who hears your voice. So, Lord, please help us never, ever, ever to forget that we are never alone. Yes. And thank you so much, Lord, for this beautiful thing, this absolute reliance, this absolute surrender. Thank you so much, Lord, for everything. Thank you for hearing and answering our prayers. This, Lord, we give back to you all the glory, the praises, and the honor. In the loving name of your Son, Jesus, all your children say, Amen. Amen.